Now people are paying attention to blue light in their environment, blue light coming out of their screens and devices, you know, their televisions. They're paying attention to how that can disrupt their living. We have a small subset of retinal ganglion cells. They're called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. They have an opsin, which was discovered called melanopsin, okay? It is a blue light detector that is designed to entrain or photo entrain our circadian clock. Blue and green light in nature are the signals for daylight. And what they do in your brain when they hit your eye is they trigger your sympathetic nervous system and the release of what I call the hormones and neurotransmitters of wakefulness. In the morning, when the sun rises, you have infrared and blue light, okay? The infrared's important because it always balances the amount of blue in the solar spectrum. When you get unopposed blue light, it creates a photo stress on your melanopsin, the IPRGCs, that is not physiologically designed. So the question should be, what does it do when you are constantly exposed to that very narrow spectrum of light on your eyes eight to 10 or more hours a day as the modern human is? And the answer is it disrupts it. It, dis it destroys melanopsin, it dissociates the photoreceptors from vitamin A, and when you have too much vitamin A in the retina, it ruins photoreceptors and it causes a lot of problems with your ability to process the natural sunlight once you do get exposed to it. And the blue light as it enters your eyes or hits your skin disrupts melanopsin. Uh, melanopsin gets disrupted, melatonin goes down, cortisol goes up, cortisol and melatonin are kind of yoked. So uh, if your cortisol is high, it uh, will raise your blood sugar. It also makes your blood stickier, more likely for the platelets to, to clump together. People who are chronically exposed to significant amounts of blue and green light can end up with lots of medical issues that are due to basically chronic overactivation of these stress hormones and uh, neurotransmitter pathways without that balance of restful, normal sleep. And, and now we're seeing just an absolute epidemic of teenagers who are insomniacs and have neuropsychiatric disorders. Suicide is now probably the number one cause of death in teenagers. There is a correlation. People who control their light environment and avoid artificial light at night will naturally sleep for a longer period of time. They'll have deeper sleep, they'll eat less, and their macronutrient intakes will also shift. They'll crave fat, particularly the more exposed to cold they are, and they will have less of a craving for carbohydrates. From a metabolic standpoint, uh, you don't want to have uh, the inability to burn fat for energy. You don't want to have to be an obligatory sugar burner. And too much blue light pushes you down the pathways where you're going to have to be an obligatory sugar burner. And when you, as you begin to get into this with them, they begin to realize, oh my gosh, I crave carbohydrates at night around 11 o'clock when I've been watching television for three or four hours and they stop doing that or they wear glasses that block all that artificial light or they change their light bulbs or they just change their, their evening routine and they shift their television watching to earlier in the night or they eliminate it you know, altogether. And all of a sudden they find out that their late night food cravings have disappeared. No pills, no potions, no powders, no surgeries, no magical thinking required. All they had to do was change their lighting environment and all of a sudden issues they'd been struggling with and they, quite frankly, they've been blaming themselves for, for sometimes years, just evaporate. Universally, these patients feel better when they get more sleep, have more darkness, and have less artificial light in their lives.